Hey guys, Putt here. Um, we have just finished up the match between Sam Slackoffs and Josh's Jigglypuffs. It was the first live match of the season, and in this video I am joined with the winner of that match, Samuel. Hello, how's it going, boys? Okay, so we're just going to ask him a few questions about the match, and uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and just uh, talk about your mindset. Yeah, so the uh, for the mindset, uh, well, just looking at the standings, like I was got beat pretty bad last week, so I was thinking, you know... I need to come away with a win here at least. I would like to beat Josh pretty bad, but uh, to get up in the standings. But I knew Josh is probably one of the tougher competitors in the league, so I was just hoping for a win at the time. Yeah, yeah, Josh is definitely a tough, a tough player to beat. Uh, his overall record in the NBA um, in season one and two combined is pretty good. And um, yeah, this I, I also agree. This is a very important week for you because you needed it. You really didn't need to start out uh, zero and two because then your last five games were going to be really, really important. But, uh, you know, even up to 1-1, one and one, definitely, I mean, it puts you right in the middle of the mix. Um, there's only one team, and that's the Torkoals. It's even 2-2, two and two, so it puts you right there in the middle of every uh, uh, all the other teams. Uh, so now, yep. moving on to the next part, let's just talk about Josh's team here and uh, what you thought he was going to bring and, you know, what he ended up did bringing. Oh, uh, I actually didn't think it was going to be too much different from last time. Uh, I don't know. I just felt like he felt really comfortable with the, uh, obviously, the Ash Ninja was coming. Um the tug kiss I thought was coming because the flinch thing is just super annoying to deal with. Um, I figured Snorlax would be in there. I was kind of surprised it wasn't. Um, I thought Golem would be in there to throw some spot or the rocks or something to make me have to defog. And I was very surprised not to see Sand Slash Alola because the rapid spin. So I later on in the game you see like I just throw in Rhyperior even though I don't care if he's going to die or not. Like it wasn't a big deal. I just wanted to get the rocks down because I knew he couldn't get rid of them. Um, so I was kind of disappointed that I didn't get to run. I should have ran. I thought about running toxic spikes with Grid Ninja, um, but I I didn't. So I'm kind of I wish I would have because he could have got rid of him. So so I thought the team was gonna be uh, Grid Ninja, uh, Togekiss, Hexorus, Snorlax, Heracross, and Golem, and maybe a little Sand Slash replacing one of those. I didn't think it would be too much different from last week. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the in the pregame show of the video. Um, I talk about um, the Arcanine because the Arcanine was the problem for Scizor. Uh, Scizor cannot break through Arcanine by his, on his on his own, and he uh, obviously gets one hit KO'd by anything that Arcanine throws at him. That's a fire type move. And uh, <laughs> one thing I said is that if Samuel can get up rocks against Josh's team, Josh, you know, he doesn't have a spinner. That's a really bad news because his Arcanine is going to get worn down over time. Um, and just a couple switches, and, and, and it ends up happening in the game, which we'll get to that in a minute. But um, yeah, and also the Snorlax. Uh, I also talked about that same thing in the video. I was like, I don't know why he didn't bring it, just because um, Samuel's team has a lot of special attackers. But then I also mentioned, like, but he did bring three physical mons this week, so I can't really blame him for not bringing the Snorlax. It was probably, um, you know, okay not to bring him. Um, see, what was the other one that you said you thought he was going to bring? Uh, Golem? Yeah. Um, also, yeah. Yeah, I thought he might bring Golem, if you're in the Raikou. Um, but, you know, he didn't bring the Raikou anyway, so it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, not having the Golem also, because he doesn't have... Excuse me. He doesn't have any uh, stealth rocker on his on his team, so he wasn't able to get rocks up. But then he didn't have a spinner either, so he was gonna lose the hazard battle for sure. And um, yep. it's kind of the same, same way I lost this week, because um, I don't I don't think I brought a hazard spinner or a hazard setter. So Josh kind of yeah. made the same mistake I did in that regard. Um, mm -hmm. Both of you guys were kind of you know bouncing your teams off me throughout the week, and uh, Josh's team actually it was much different. Um, he ch he changed it several times. Um, he did have Snorlax in there at one point. Um, Toge and Togekiss, yeah, yeah. He did have Togekiss in there at one point. Um, he was running like, he was actually running the same set on Togekiss that he brought on the um, <coughs> Gardevoir. Um, but he liked the Gardevoir more. Um, which I don't know. They're they're pretty similar. But um, he was running like yeah. a specially defensive bulky set with a uh, wish and protect and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, but yeah. I think Josh's team, you know, he might have, might have changed up a couple here and there to make it better. Mm -hmm. But overall, I, yeah, like you said, Alola and Sand Slash I, actually might have been really good because he, um, he, yeah, he could have done pretty good against your team, actually, looking at it now. Um, yeah. I Well, I, he could have brought it uh, and could have obviously got rid of those rocks after he killed the Rhyperior. Um, but I did. I didn't ever use it. But in my mindset, so I actually don't do crunching numbers. I just kind of, like, look at the tops and then go from there. And then, so I had literally an answer for everybody on his team. Like, one of my Pokemon could deal with it for sure, um, which is kind of sketchy sometimes because if that Pokemon dies, like, obviously in a rough spot. But, like, I had, for the Sand Slash, I had two Hidden Power Fires waiting for it uh, on the team. Um, so I had answers for everything. 
whatever yeah, he brought. I believe, I believe he had Hidden Power Fire on Latios, right? Yeah, and yeah, Latios and um, Greninja. Yeah, because yeah, Latios, um, even though uh, um, Sand Slash's special defense isn't very good, but he does resist um, the uh, Draco Meteor, so if he ran just a little bit of special defense, you know, he could take one really easy. And then, mm -hmm. um, of course, like an Ice type move in return would um, probably Oko you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the Hidden Power Fire is definitely a good idea to run against the Sand Slash just in case. Um, yeah. It never hurts. Um, but, uh, yeah, I like that idea. All right, so uh, that's Josh's team. Let's talk about let's talk about what you brought this week because uh, you, you changed up your minds a little bit. Um, I, I'll, Let me talk about my experience against you because I actually thought you were going to bring um, Rhyperior week one. And uh, when I seen you didn't, I was really excited. But uh, I knew he was going to bring Rhyperior for this week. And it's one of the mods I pointed out in the pregame show is one ones to watch for because um, I thought Josh would probably have a hard time breaking through it and that Rhyperior could actually put off some offensive pressure to help out the Scizor. Yeah, um, yeah, it's actually a really super strong mon. Uh, I was really surprised. Um, it has a lot of it has a lot of damage, uh, shockingly, and it can take, especially with the uh, I think it's Sturdy Rock the ability. It only takes three fourths of what a super effective does, and it had the Rocky helmet on it. So anything that he tried to, I mean, the only way he could break through is with a special defense. Really, he's gonna have a hard time with the uh, the normal physical attackers. Um, so I thought it was. That was a decent pick in him. I thought it was going to be something he wouldn't expect, really. Um, cause I knew he thought that I was going to bring Clefable, and I thought he was thinking I was going to bring Porygon as my other tank, so I just kind of swapped it up. Yeah, let me see. Uh, Josh, actually, he actually made the prediction um, in the Discord chat on who he thought you would bring. He said Clefable, Greninja, Scizor, Melodic, Latios, and then he didn't know about a sixth one. Um, he was actually really afraid of your Melodic. Um, uh, I'm, a, I'm assuming that's maybe why he brought the Tangrowth, so he could, you know... Um, hit it with something, uh, grass, grass or something. But uh, yeah. but yeah, he was really afraid of the the melodic, and then you didn't even end up bringing it. So um, that was uh, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's um, I don't really like that mon all that much to be honest with you. Um, it just wasn't something that I was thinking about. I just yeah, like yeah. the the, the Rhyperior has so much. Um, just um, it's standard defense or attack is already 140. Um, and then the Leafeon, I brought that because was, uh, of what was it, Scarf Leafeon? Yeah, the yeah, okay. speed, speed one. I brought that um, thinking, I was thinking it could stop the Greninja. Um, yeah, it could have stopped, a... it, it, it stopped the Tan Growth because it had a bug move on it, mm -hmm. um, which the bug move also would have helped with Gardevoir. So I was I was trying to save it for last because it would kind of, like it kind of surprise him. And it had knockoff. So like if I got into a, a good matchup, I would just knock off the next person he swapped in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, later in the game, the Leafeon threat does come through pretty good, but uh, <coughs> I uh, I did like to scarf Leafeon because it checks, like you said, it can easily um, outspeed, even if he has like Battle Bond Greninja up, um, Leafeon's fast enough with the scarf that it still outspeeds Battle Bond Greninja, so I really like that choice on your side. Um, it's kind of like, like last week I did the same thing against your team because I was afraid of that Greninja, so I brought um, Choice Scarf to Rant because I knew I could one-shot um, Greninja just in case. Cause I didn't want that mm -hmm. thing, cause that's like scary, and I I wanted to be yeah. able to take it out before it got going. So um, yeah, I, I really like that pick. Um, is there anything else you want to say about your team, or you want to start the match? Or uh, I don't I'm trying to think who else I brought. Um, everything else was pretty much the same. Oh, here I, I, I can read off too, cause yeah, you can't see my screen. Uh, see, so you, yeah. you see, we talked about Greninja right here. The Scizor, I thought the Scizor was pretty interesting because like. Scizor is really good against a lot of his team, but it's also like really bad against some of them. Um, I thought yeah. that was kind of interesting. It was Expert's Belt Scissor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Expert Belt. Yeah, I you, I, yeah, you show me the Expert Belt, and I, when I first seen it, I thought, what in the world? Expert Belt Scissor is something I've never seen before. And I thought, I honestly thought that was like really stupid at first. And then I went and looked at Josh's team, and I'm like, holy cow, Expert Belt Scissor is actually really good. Like, I was like, that's really good. The only reason why I didn't want to, well, because what I did on your game was I had one of the choice bands, whichever one gets it, attack. Um, and I didn't like it. I didn't like being, I don't like being stuck with one move. Like it kind of bothers me. So like with the scissor, I didn't want that. I mean, I know it makes it super strong, but at the same time, like I wanted something yeah. that would still do power, but I had like, I had the U-turn to get out. I have the superpower that can clean clock and you just kill people and I had the bullet punch. I don't want to be stuck just using bullet punch or, you know, whatever. Yeah, so. yeah. I actually think the expert belt was huge in this game. I think at one point Josh um 
he tries to scout your Scizor, and I think that he thought you were Bandit, so he stays in, but then you um, it, were able to switch to a different move uh, in the game and take him out, so I thought that was a pretty interesting play, because when I was watching it live, I said, uh, I saw the protection, I was like, okay, Josh is scouting here, and he's probably going to think he's Bandit, and sure enough, he stayed in, because he thought you were going to ban U-turn, um, and uh, yeah, he didn't take it, but then you went for the bullet punch and took him out, so I think that surprised him a little bit. Um, that's right, I forgot about that, yeah. And then the Clefable, I think this Clefable is the only one we haven't talked about. Clefable, you know, this is my mom, dude. I love this Pokemon. Um, yeah. She was just there to heal and get rid of status effects. Dude, that's, that's what it. she does. That's what she does. She's <laughs> annoying. She's hard to work around. Um, the unaware was like, like this Clefable is like the perfect Pokemon to go against Heracross because it resists both of his stab moves. And, you know, it also has unaware to um, uh, nullify the Moxie boost. So I really like that pick. Uh, Bringing the unaware Clefable over the Magic Guard one, because the Magic Guard one's the one you usually see, because uh, mm. it you know can switch into Stealth Rocks and statuses for free. So, but I really like that uh, uh, unaware set. Mm. So this is for all the boys in the NBA BA. You better watch out. Clefable is gonna be in there every week. I'm gonna <laughs> let you know. <laughs> He's just gonna let everybody know Clefable is in there every yeah. week. I can't blame yeah. you honestly. Like if I had Clefable, I know I had Clefable last season. I'm pretty sure I brought it every game last season. Um, it's just a super solid mon. It can do so many different roles too. That's my favorite thing about Clefable is that it it can wear any kind of hat you need it to wear for your team. Yeah. And uh, that's my. It's, I, really, it's funny you say that because at the beginning of the week, I literally was running offensive, uh, like or special attack on yeah, it a lot, yeah. trying to see if I could surprise and catch him off guard, and I just didn't really enjoy it all that much. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, that, yeah, that would be a tough set to pull off. Um, if you ran like a calm mind set, you could probably do it. Like you could run like mm -hmm. a bulky set and then try to set up some calm minds and then try to win yeah. from there. That that could probably work pretty well. But um, you know, running just straight up offense might be a little difficult. But uh, but yeah, this guy. I mean, he can do just about everything except for being a fast sweeper. Like he can almost yeah. literally do anything else. Um, that's why I, I just love that Pokemon. And of course, the fairy typing is super strong. And, uh, yeah, busted. Yeah, he, he's he's a pretty dumb Pokemon, and he has a huge move pool. Like we didn't even mention that. Like his move pool is really stupid. Um, yeah. But it's it's mostly because like um it used to be a normal Pokemon before Gen six, and normal Pokemon are no notorious for having huge move pools because that kind of like makes up for the fact that they don't hit anybody super effective with a stab yeah. move. And then when he gets the Fairy type in, well, his move pool stayed the same like a normal Pokemon. So that's what yeah. makes him an OU and so strong. Uh, anyways, I think mm. we talked about every Mon. Do um, you want to just start the game now? Yeah, we can. Uh, I'm going to put it on really slow mode so I can make sure I stop and uh, not skip anything. All right, really so slow. Uh, so I'm, I'm on turn one right here. Um, All right, yeah, I just threw, yeah, they just threw out. I'm going to have to put it on slow. So really slow is really slow. Holy God. Really <laughs> yeah. I don't know how slow it is. <laughs> okay, so turn one, man. I'm watching this, and I see this matchup, and I said, I said, hmm, this is interesting. I said, this is a really... Uh, this is a really good matchup for Samuel. I was like, Greninja in this spot is like, this is this is good. I was like, Josh needs to get out. Um, what was going through your mind at, on turn number one? Um, I was just gonna. Well, I was looking at his Pokemon. I was like, okay, every one of his Pokemon gets hurt. Or is gonna get is gonna get hurt by this ice. Like, I think uh, Tangrowth is two times. Uh, I think Heracross is two times. Maybe uh, Haxorus would die. Greninja would get hurt by it, but it wouldn't. I mean, he might resist it, but I'm I'm running. I, I, by the way, I'm running full special attack on the Greninja. I wasn't running any attack. Um, oh, okay, so yeah, you, yeah, okay, got you. And then uh, Gardevoir, it would take it, but it would still get hurt. I feel like, and then the only one that could resist it a lot would be the Arcanine, probably. And so I was like, I'm just gonna throw the Ice Beam out here because if he doesn't swap out, like this thing's gonna get hurt really bad, and if not dead, and then whoever he brings in is gonna feel the pain too. So um, yeah. Um, was was you he running choice spec screen injury? Uh, yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. See, uh, whenever I was watching this, so I seen this play, and then uh, I'm just gonna play it here on my screen. So uh, I seen, I was like, he's just gonna take an ice beam, and then I seen the one hundred percent. I was like, what is he doing? He just left him in, and I was like, <laughs> I was actually kind of surprised because I know the bulk on Tangra, like his special defense is pretty trash, <laughs> but um. So I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I don't know why I was surprised because that I was like, that's Specs Greninja Ice Beam, that's definitely going to hit KO. So yeah, you took him down there, and that was a huge start for the battle because you know Tangrowth with Regenerator is super annoying to deal with, and uh, Tangrowth mm. actually did pretty good against your team. Like, um, Scizor doesn't do good against because like Scizor's U-turn is super effective, and but like yeah. Rhyperior and Leafeon get completely walled by Tangrowth. So I was mm. really, really surprised that he just let it like throw it away, like. This was part of his win condition yeah. was keeping this thing alive to wall those other two, but he just lost mm -hmm. in turn one. It was just a huge 
like start for you. Yeah. So let's go to turn two here. Uh, this turn I just okay I didn't realize that that was super effective, but I thought I'm just gonna either I didn't want anybody else to take that close combat. Um, so I was like I'm just gonna sack this guy. If he hits off, he's gonna, you know, kill it. But yeah, yeah. See, uh, I was when I was watching this, I said um. Uh, one thing to pay attention to is if a, if a Pokemon comes in that you know you're faster than, um, like this, and he's in a you know a spot to one hit KO you, he's probably scarfed, you know, because um, yeah. it, very very rarely do p- players bluff a scarf because it's just too risky of a play to bluff, um, having mm-hmm. a scarf. So I was like, I'm pretty sure for certain this Heracross is scarfed. And then uh, I was actually hoping you'd switch out to Clefable just because like I kn- I know that Clefable can wall like any move this thing goes for. But then you stayed yeah. in. I just thought maybe you didn't think about the scarf and just was hoping that you could get another ice beam KO. Cause I don't know if it would have KO'd because it's not super, but um, it would have done a ton because this is specs for a ninja. But yeah, um, it, I was pretty, I was pretty, actually pretty nervous when I swapped. In. I didn't know how to swap in. I didn't. I I completely forgot about the the Cold Fable unaware thing. But the Gladius, I was like, man, you know, so I could if it's faster. And what I was scared of was this thing was faster than me. That's what really scared me. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can actually hover over them um, during the match, and it'll show you their match. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I saw that, but I didn't know if he was running, like, kind of like, uh, because it was faster than my Greninja. Yeah, My yeah, Greninja yeah. Is, is 377. Yeah, yeah. So, well, like, if, I, if he outspeeds your Greninja, you know that it's Scarfed, and since he's Scarfed, he's locked, locked into close combat. So um, all, uh, you, all you need to do is, you know, switch into a fighting resist. Um, when I was watching, I was like, can you just go into Clefable here? And then you switched into Latios, and I was like, well, you know what? Actually, this is probably better. Because Latios can definitely take a close combat if he stays in, mm-hmm. and if he, and, I mean, if if Josh stays in and close combat is Latios, and then he goes for a side shock and kills Heracross, like that is huge for Samuel because he's got yeah. Heracross and Tangrowth out of the way. So I was like, yeah. he's pretty much safe to either he can just fire off a side shock, or you know, I don't, I didn't know your full move set, so I was like, he could just do whatever he wanted to, and then uh, you do end up going for the side shock because he does go into Gardevoir, which was the right play. Uh, he's probably predicting like a Draco Meteor or something. Um, yeah. But then, because of the Psy Shock, this is what makes Latio so strong, is that it can hit. Because, um, see, Psy Shock is a special move, but it hits on the physical defensive so side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, Gardevoir's physical defense is pretty trash, and it actually does 41%. And uh, I'm pretty sure Josh is running um, max special defense Gardevoir here. Max HP, max special defense. So, um, the fact that Psy Shock hits on the physical side. I mean, because that was a not very effective move, and it did 41%. 41. So, that was yeah. actually insane damage there. And then, uh, on the next turn... Um, nothing special is really happening. Um, just turn, swap. Yeah, it's just switch into. Me. Yeah, you just toxic on your right here, and then on turn five he goes for the protect, and uh, he goes for I the protect the just old. to scout you to see what you were gonna go for, um, and mm-hmm. then you just go for rocks. I was like, oh man, that's a that's a really bad play for Josh because Samuel got free rocks for literally nothing. Um, yeah, right here in this next move, I was thinking about going for a crunch, like, but then I was sitting there thinking, I was like, it's not gonna kill him. No. And then yeah, crunch would have been neutral because the fairy would have made it. Yeah, like fairy. A neutral. Yeah, yeah. So I, that's when I swapped into the Clefable. Um, and just yeah, got yeah. and just went for the heal bell. Yeah, at the time I was watching, I was like, I know Moonblast probably won't. I don't think Moonblast can KO because like even though um, Rhyperior's special defense is terrible, um, he should still be able to take one hit and then you know like an earthquake or a stone edge will kill. Um, but then you made the switch to Clefable, and I actually like that switch a lot more because um, Clefable. Um, can take the moon blast pretty easily, and the heal bell yeah. also just gets rid of the poison. Yeah, he wasted. I mean, pretty much wasted a turn because now I got two. I I got two for one, pretty much. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got you got up rocks for free, which was huge, and then you're able to get the heal bell off. Um, yeah, I think right. I think right here I use a moon blast. I was trying to. No, I, I went through. Okay, I was because I thought there's one point I tried to check and see how much damage it would do to him. Okay, so here, but, here's what here's why I'll stop at that turn eight when you switch. Um, because mm-hmm. you, you, so he talks to you, you heal build, you got rid of the poison on your Clefable, which is really huge, especially considering it's unaware, and then you got the, the poison off of Rhyperior, which is also huge, because those are two of your, those are actually your two main walls, um, so mm-hmm. they were both poisoned, and in one turn you got rid of both of them, so that was huge, and then you make the switch into Scizor, predicting the, the, the uh, Toxic again, um, on Josh's side, I thought this was interesting, because, um, he didn't know if you were Magic Guard Clefable yet, because, um, on the toxic, on the turn he did toxic your Clefable, the toxic didn't tick because of heal bill. Um, so he yeah, could have yeah. just been magic guard and you wouldn't have taken any damage from it anyways. So I was really surprised that he went for that play, um, twice in a row. 
Um, but yeah, you made a super good switch, and I think this was like the play of the game, honestly, for me, was this switch, because this is where you captured all the momentum on your side, because um, he just goes for the moon, uh, no, the toxic, it's in moon, <coughs> and then he has to switch here, because the Gardevoir punch. dies to uh, yeah. bullet punch, and punch, uh, yeah. this is where the rocks come in huge, because he, he brings up the uh, Arcanine, and the uh, Arcanine has to take 25% on entry, and then I was like, this is going to be a U-turn. And uh, indeed, it is a U-turn. Even at minus one, it does uh, 13%, which obviously isn't a lot of damage. But the main thing is to wear this thing down. Yeah. And uh, he wasn't running leftovers. Uh, let's see. I have no idea. Oh, he was running citrus berry because you proc it later. Um, yeah. I, I wish he. I think he should have been running leftovers on this set instead, just because of like rocks damage and switching into U-turns and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that U-turn is the right play to make there because uh, yeah. even though it does no damage, it gets it gets the switch initiative <laughs> into this guy. And uh, yeah. when I seen uh, right here come out, I was like, oh boy, here we go. So just uh, uh, let's let's go back to the uh, turn where you switch in scissor and just tell me you're like what you was thinking. Oh uh, yeah, I was gonna. Well, okay, I swapped him because I just thought there's nothing that he could do to kill the scissor. He's already shown me he has moonblast, protect, and toxic. Um. So the scissor's gonna—he might take a hit, but he's not gonna die. So that's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's good to like pay attention to the move set, yeah. And then, so I guess he was kind of frustrated that I heal build, and he wanted to get—he wanted to get on the click, the cliff fable because he knew that he might—I might stay in for a while, and then it would just bring it down because you know it just doubles every time or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And so I swapped into him, and then I knew he wasn't gonna stay in. I just knew it. I didn't know what he was gonna swap to, but I knew that everybody that on his team. Like either if he brought in Heracross or Arcanine is gonna beat my um scissor. Um so I just I just knew I had to get out and it's always I mean, when you know something's about to happen, you just have to get a step ahead, right? So yeah, like yeah. luckily I had U turn on as a move set and then I just use the U turn, boom, and then go into a weakness of his where I could get the upper hand again. Like I'm one step ahead of him yeah, at this yeah, point. Yeah. You you definitely um that switch in a scissor captured the momentum for you. Uh, before that play, it was kind of just back and forth. Really, nobody had the momentum. It was just kind of yeah. like feeling each other out. But then you made the play that kind of that put the game in your favor, you know. And then uh, then the U turn was another positive play. And then the uh, then the Rhyperior is another positive play. So then let's just talk about the Rhyperior Arcanine matchup here. And uh, what were you thinking with the well? Now you're in a good spot. You know, you got Rhyperior yeah. in front of the Arcanine. The Arcanine is like the main thing that walls your Scizor, and you've already worn him down a little bit, and you're in a good matchup. So what was you thinking here? Uh, I was I looked at his team and I was like, "Is there anybody that's gonna swap to that I could predict a crunch on or something like that?" And I was like, "You know, there's nobody that can levitate." So I was like, "I'm just gonna hit the earthquake. If he stays in, he's gonna take a lot of damage." I did not expect the, the will o' wisp really hurt because it cuts his attack in half, which is like huge for him because I ain't running any attack on him. I don't think besides like maybe four or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's like at probably like sixty right here. So I'm just gonna hit the earthquake. It's going to hurt somebody if they come in. Uh, if not, it's going to hurt this Arcanine. And then, of course, he stayed in, used the Will Wisp, and it did like 50% of his damage. Um, then you get to bury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, what, that's what I was talking about when I was watching this video live, is I was saying, uh, um, Josh, uh, that Samuel here, he can pretty much press Earthquake for free because Josh <laughs> has no flyers or levitators, and nobody on his team has resisted e to it either. So I was like, he can just press Earthquake for free. Um, Josh just stays in and goes for the Will O' Wisp. Uh, that's why I, I said Josh could just Will O' Wisp here, um, but uh, he didn't really have a good play. And because even Will O' Wisping you, um, I said if he Will O' Wisp, you know the Earthquake's still gonna do a lot to Arcanine, and Arcanine has no offensive pressure against this thing. So like, you know yeah. you're um, you know you're um, uh, right here's in like no threat of going down. So uh, I was like Will O' Wisp is really his only play because uh, if he switches anything, anything else is gonna take a ton of damage. Cause, um, mm -hmm. But then I was like, even if you Will-O-Wisp, though, all, all Samuel has to do is uh, find a way to get into Clefable and Heal Bill, and this thing's, you know, back to max back attack. To all, yeah. So, I, like, Josh really didn't have a good play to make here. And and also I pointed out in the video, like, this is where the uh, turn one Tangrowth play comes in huge. Because mm, if he has Tangrowth, like, Tangrowth could wall Rhyperior super easy. Um, yeah. He just switches into Tangrowth, and the momentum is back in his favor. So losing that mm -hmm. Tangrowth was actually so big for him in this in this spot in particular. But anyways, yeah. like you said, you go for the Earthquake after the Will-O-Wisp. Then I don't know what he was thinking with the Extreme Speed. I have no I don't. I mean, I, th I thought if anything, he had like a, cl a close combat. 
Yeah, yeah, I thought he was going to run close combat too. Um, it wouldn't do that much to your rep here because, well, for I a mean, few super reasons, defense. Yeah, like mm-hmm. huge defense. Um, the solid rock ability that you touched on yeah. earlier that reduces super effective yeah. attacks. The fact that you know it's not a stab move for Arcanine, and the fact that he was running um, bulky Arcanine defensive, yeah. like not offensive Arcanine. So mm-hmm. um, he still wouldn't have done that much, but yeah, I definitely think he should have ran close combat over extreme speed. Um, I, I guess he was just running his extreme speed to like pick off some KOs if he needed to, but I really don't know, like, like who he's going to really pick off with that. Um, yeah, I definitely think uh, close combat would have been better because he could have at least yeah. dropped you down to, you know, down below half. I'm sure it would have yeah. done at least that much. So, uh, but yeah, uh, let's, let me get, let me get to that point on my screen real quick. Okay, cool. Yeah. So yeah, there is the extreme speed and then you just go for another earthquake and finish him off. Yeah, and at this point, I'm just thinking, do I want to sack this guy or keep him alive? Yeah, yeah. Um, if I remember correctly, I think this turn took a pretty good while um, when I was watching it live um, yeah. when he brought out the Greninja because I thought this was, like, a really interesting turn on number 11 here because it's like, you know, do you do you switch out here or do you – I mean, you could you could sack your Rhyperior and give – but that would give Greninja the Battle Bond um, boost. Yeah, that's, a, that's what I was thinking. I was like, man, he's going to be, like, super fast. I'm going to be able to kill him. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, so you do switch out because, like, you're fearing the battle bond, and that was the right play, in my opinion. And uh, So what's crazy here, too, is though is he knew that either I was going to swap into something or I was going to keep him, and he went for a dark pulse. Like, I know that my right here, your special defense is a lot, but it's not super effective, right? And he's not bonded, or like, he's not uh, he's yeah, not yeah, yeah. scarfed or, or anything. So it's like, I don't, I don't, I don't really understand, I guess, because um, um, he, he could have just water shuriken and probably killed my guy easily. Uh, the Rhyperior. Yeah, and then... I, I don't think Dark Pulse kills Rhyperior at that range. Um, although I want to say Josh told me he was running Specs. As well. uh, okay. Oh, I really? think. I can't remember, actually. Because um, if he was running Specs, then Dark Pulse probably did kill at that range. Um, oh, yeah. I don't remember, to be honest with you. Um, I, I think um, I think Water Shirt probably would have been the better middle ground play. Or... Yeah. Um, just to, just because, I don't know. It's it's, it's tough to say because like Water Shuriken for sure kills Rhyperior from there. But yeah, uh, see, I mean, I maybe he thought it, I was, maybe he thought I was gonna go into Leafeon or something. I don't know. But I wasn't about to. The thing is, I wasn't. The whole time I was like, I'm not gonna swap to an offensive mind. I will not sack an offensive mind. Like, I will sack this Rhyperior, this Cliff of Able, easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not the. Yeah, as long as you, as long as your Leafeon was still like in the back, like you didn't have to worry about Greninja all that much. You just um even if you got Battle Bond um going, you could just switch into um Leafeon and you know use outspeed with Scarf of course, and you obviously one hit KO with the Leaf Blade. So yeah. yeah, you all you had that win condition in the back that you that you did keep safe. Um, I, what I thought he was, what I thought was that he predicted you to switch to Latios because like Latios, I think uh, is your yeah. only. Well, Dragon except for Sorry. Leafeon is your only water resistance, so I thought mm-hmm. he's probably going to predict a water resi- a water move, and uh, or what I was thinking is that Josh predicted you to predict a water move and go into your Latios since it um, resists it, and then try to mm-hmm. fire off a, uh, like a Draco or something. But uh, so that's why I thought you went for the Dark Pulse. But then you go into Clefable, which is like best case scenario for you because it's um, your only resistance on the team to Dark is Clefable. So that worked out great for you because Greninja can't touch this thing, so he yeah. switches out of his Greninja. And he goes into his Gardevoir again. I just threw for the wish, I think. So I did. Yeah, he threw for the wish. I was actually hoping you would heal bail here to get the Rhyperior's uh, burn off. Um, but yeah. also, but then when you seen the wish, I was like, well, this is actually fine because then he can heal bail on this turn. Um, but then you ended up going for the Moon Blast. I, I just want to see how much damage it did. I didn't expect. I, I was surprised that it didn't do much because his did like thirty. I was like, oh dang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, he was running um, max HP, <laughs> max special defense, um, calm or whichever nature it is that. Uh, boost special attack and our best special defense and lowers attack so he was able mm. to take that hit no problem and then um i just did the same move i did earlier just plop, the yeah, scissor. Just plop out the scissor um i was really surprised to see like um looking back josh should have um put hidden power fire on his gardevoir and uh, uh, predicted yeah. this switch because um like this is uh, one thing i was thinking about earlier in the week because uh, i was kind of like running the game like how the game would go through my head and uh, i looked at arcanine versus scissor matchup and i was like you know, Scizor can't touch Arcanine. Like, Intimidate, Will-O-Wisp, um, he resists both stab moves. Um, Ar- Arcanine can easily kill Scizor. I was like, the, like Samuel's got to get rid of Arcanine. And if he does, like, Arcanine can... I mean, uh, if he does get rid of Arcanine, then Scizor can do just about whatever he wants to, especially with his mm-hmm. Gardevoir. And um, 
I think he should have been running Hidden Power Fire because um, what I was thinking was like every time Gardevoir comes out, Josh can or, uh, Samuel can just go straight into Scizor and captures all the momentum. And um, mm-hmm. you did it earlier in the match. That was like really the match that or the really the play that put the match in your favor. And then you did it again yeah. here. And um, so he main blast. It does twenty five percent. That's nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then, and then this then is the I play just... I was talking about earlier in the match where he 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 protects. Yeah. And. Um, I, I think he was just scouting U-turn. you here, and when he sees his U-turn, he's probably thinking, okay, he's probably just banded, because he knew you ran banded Scizor last week. Yeah. So I imagine that's I thought, what he was thinking. I mean, I thought he was going to swap right there, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did too. Um, but then you just drop the bullet punch, you're like, okay, he's going to stay in. And so that, that bullet punch easily kills. And then I'm going to hair across. At this point, I'm just like, I, once again, I'm just going to sack somebody, and hope I get some damage off. Uh... Yeah, that close combat did a lot of damage. Yeah. But you make a really I good mean, play here. I like what you do. You go for the superpower to drop him into bullet punch range. So I really, because I don't, because, uh, yeah, I really like this play. Because you was able to take out the hair cross without giving him a moxie boost. So that was like, that was really well played. And then he brings mm-hmm. out his Greninja, which is the right play. And, uh. Um, yeah, I just, just sacked this boy right here. You yeah, know, you, yeah your win off. condition's like pretty much in the bag at this point. Because even mm-hmm. if he gets Battle Bond, it's not that big a deal. Because, like you said, you had Scarf Leaf on in the back. <clears throat> I mean, it would have been nice to win 5-0. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Differential. Nice, but... Like I was talking about that. I was like, mm-hmm. man, it would be nice to have the differential a lot higher. But at the same time, like, yeah, see, here's the Leaf on, and it just yeah, it completely. I was trying to win. Dude. I, yeah, yeah. If he would have stayed edge. in there, um, you definitely could have had um, probably a good a chance at the 4-0, yeah. At this point, I'm sitting there thinking, okay, I'm going to do whatever it takes to win. I'll sack any mine. <laughs> <laughs> this, okay, I will say this. This is a good play by Josh right here. The Poison Jab, I did not expect yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what I was talking about because he predict. Well, it wasn't really a prediction because uh, Leafeon's also weak to Poison Jab, so I guess yeah. that's why he chose it. Um, but, yeah, he does a butt ton to this Clefable. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, uh, I he just not. finishes it off, which really sucks for you because you lose some of your differential. But um, yeah. the fact that he had two really strong offensive mons, as his last two, you know, that's what makes it difficult is trying to work around these guys while keeping your di- differential up. And I think you just go into yeah. Latios here, and Josh makes this. Uh, he's gonna. I think he switches out. Swap, which I didn't. I, I, didn't I didn't. Uh, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't agree with this play because. Um, okay, let me let me just pause it real quick. Um, yeah, when he I'll switches to his thing. Greninja. So the reason I don't agree with this play is because. <coughs> so, um, he was running Banded Haxorus. I'm pretty sure. Mm. But so so Latios alv- always outspeeds. Um, um, Haxorus. So, mm. um, what when it Haxorus mm. is not scarfed? So what he ne- like as long as Latios is alive, Haxorus is dead. So the fact that he switched in his Greninja here, he's like he's risking, like his only chance here is if Draco Meteor misses, and if that happens, he might could possibly do something. Um, but I don't know. He sacks his Greninja, and then Haxorus also just dies to Latios. So his his Greninja mm-hmm. dies to Draco. <clears throat> yeah, and then out comes yeah. the uh, the Haxorus here. And honestly, I thought you might just stay in and go for another Draco because I thought you know minus two Draco will probably just KOs from this range. Yeah, I didn't know if it'd kill him or not, so I just made the safe play, swapped, took the. I didn't know if Rhyperior would lift through one, uh, but I just wanted. To, I knew I just wanted to get the special attack back up to yeah, one hundred. Definitely the safer play because you didn't want to. You didn't want to run a risk for it. Yeah, see, I'm still see like that's what that's what stinks. Like I two o whatever, and I'm still like fourth in the standings or whatever. I'm tied with yeah, somebody, yeah, yeah. I think. Well, a lot Which of it sucks, comes from but the, yeah, yeah, from last week I know, yeah. but 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 the, my my main thing, as I said this earlier, is I just wanted to win. Like that was my just want to get one in, under the bag, and then next week or two weeks from now, I can worry about win differential and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. And then I just the, made the same play and went for the side shock because yeah, exactly. then you had the a play, higher is, percentage. Yeah, I was sitting here and I was like, okay, here Draco finishes the game, and then you side shock him like, duh, like that was the obvious play, like the safest play because if he, the only way he loses is if Draco Meteor, if he does that, misses. misses. Yeah. yeah. So that was definitely the right play to make, which I think you had it in the bag regardless because, yeah, yeah, because he was low bang. enough. Yeah, he was low enough that Leafion would finish him off. So, um, yeah. but yeah, dude, that was a really well played game. I, I like the team you brought was super strong and it covered his whole team. Like the Clefable unaware was really really clutch. Um, the rocks were huge, you know. Um, if you didn't have rocks, this game would have been a lot harder. Um, the turn one thing is something that you can never predict, and I did not see that coming. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was just weird. I think Josh just kind of had a he just had a moment where he went and went thinking th- uh, I, right about it. But uh, I think that I think he well, I knew that he was gonna I knew he thought I was gonna bring out Rhyperia first because 
he knew I wanted to throw down. He knows, like, every time we played scrims, like, he knows I'll throw down rocks first. Yeah, like, that's yeah. just that's what I always do, usually. And so I knew something that was weak. Something my right here is weak to was going to come out first. And I was like, well, this guy's about covered about all of it, so I'm going to throw him out there. And uh, Yeah, I really like the Greninja lead. You just kind of like, you know what? I'm just going to throw him out there, and I'm just going to hit something hard. And I think it, and it obviously worked out great because even though Greninja died on the very next turn, I think I think taking out the, the Tangrowth was definitely worth it. He did his job. He got me the lead there. Um, but I'm just, I'm, you know, excited to win. Ready to get back at it. <laughs> yeah, it was a very nice win. Um, you got Reagan next week. Tell me what you think about that game. Uh, it's going to be tough. Uh, Reagan's a wild card. He didn't play last season, so I don't really know much about his playing style. I haven't watched any games yet. Um, I'm looking at his team right now. I see, I tell you one thing I see is one hazard maneuver. That's all I can see. I can prepare for that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's got a lot of stealth rocks, so that's kind of that's gonna be a really annoying <laughs> um, thing. At least it's not toxic. That toxic box is, um, I hate that. Um, but yeah. yeah, I think I, you know, we're just gonna have to see what he's got. Um, yeah, right. start making matching tops off and uh, see what I can do to see what I can do to surprise him. Yeah, Reagan's definitely a wild card because, uh, like you said, we, he's only had one battle so far in the league, and uh, he almost beat Colton in the first game, which is pretty surprising considering um, Colton. Mm-hmm. You know, he's had a pretty, <clears throat> pretty good record overall in the NABA, and uh, mm-hmm. he almost he almost beat him. Um, if he had played the game a little bit better, and, you know, preserved his walls a little bit better, he would have actually uh, probably beat Colton in the very first game. So uh, he has a really strong team. Um, I, yeah, I really like his team, but uh, yeah, that's gonna be a fun mm-hmm. one to watch as well. Um, yep, yep. Let's see, we got. Uh, Caleb and Reagan's tomorrow night. Yep. What are, are we doing a live game for that? Oh, uh, wait, who's it? Caleb and Reagan? Caleb and Reagan, yeah. Uh, let me look at Caleb's team real fast. Uh, let's see. The, the, the Caleb, the Caleb has a really strong team. Um, they both have really good teams, but Caleb's team is like, it has the highest base stat total in the league. It's a very scary team. Yeah, I think, uh, I think, I think Reagan can do it, you know. I think uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna pull for Reagan. I'm pulling okay, for the underdog. Okay, so you going for the Raditzes? I see. I see. Yeah, I think if he can get rid of the the KB Kyron Black, I think he's got a shot. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's what with everybody this, on this whole entire <laughs> yeah, roster yeah, is though. <laughs> hey, you get rid of that. Get rid of that, and you're you're good to yeah, go. Yeah, exactly um, right. Yeah. So if Reagan can maybe surprise him, play do some um, some sick plays, you know, uh, some things he's not expecting. I think he can catch him off guard, and then KB can die. Um. Oh, we'll see, dude. Uh, are we doing a live game for that tomorrow, or is that just... Uh, I don't know, actually. I'll talk to those guys. Might actually do a live one tomorrow. Um, I think this yeah. is probably the best thing we ever did. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is awesome. Um, we'll definitely... I'll try... I'll talk to them. If they want to do a live one, we'll definitely do one. Um, mm-hmm. And then you can get in here. Maybe... I think... Well, I, th- I don't think Josh will be home yet, so unfortunately, he won't be able to be here, but me and you can yeah. do the live one tomorrow if they're down for it, um, which yeah, I don't see why I'll... they wouldn't be, so... Yeah, I'll be on all, yeah. all night tomorrow. Okay, so awesome. as long as they play the uh, well, me and Paul are going putting or golfing, I think. So okay, okay, uh, sweet, then after sweet. that, we'll be good. Nice. Um, but yeah. Uh, all right. So that's Reagan, about, I think we covered all of our all of our points here. Yeah, I think so. All right. Um, well. Yeah, we need was, to do like a live game every week. Yeah, yeah. That's what that's what we were talking about. Um, me and Friday night, about that, Pokemon. Like, yeah, yeah, we were doing like, do like a game of the week kind of thing. And yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll try to do hey, as many as possible because I love doing them. Um, it's really hey, fun. Do you think it's gonna be? Do you think it's gonna be next week, dude? Um, I mean, I got week, one. Yeah, I haven't even looked at the schedule. Let me look at the schedule. Real quick. I see. I, I see one right now. Um, who's that? Uh, I see Hunter and John. Two out of one win. <laughs> dude, the the Torrance Torkel is the played. first place over uh, the first place team overall, and I'm going against mm-hmm. them next week. I really need to. You know, let me talk about my match. Um, because <laughs> he's talking about yeah. your team. Um, John's team is like is really strong. I actually drafted for him because of his like. You know, all of his stuff wasn't working, so he didn't realize what you were drafting. So I'm playing against the team that I drafted, and uh, it's really scary. There's some mons on his team I wish I had drafted on my own, to be honest, because he yeah. has like uh, he has more um, stealth rock setters than I do, like by a lot. I'm like, oh, yeah, so I'm, many like crap. I'm like, I wish I had you know drafted him instead of him. But uh, yeah, uh, John's had a really good start of the season. Um, his guard chomp has been like his guard chomp was the MVP of week number one, so that thing is definitely scary. Um, his Galvantula has been like. A big time playmaker because it's been it hasn't really done anything offensively, but um, setting up the webs yeah. has just been kind of a pain to make. Yeah, it's man. annoying. Cool. It, yeah. ruins, it ruins the whole entire game. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's um, why when when you scrimmed with me, you use that team, and yeah, I just yeah. I knew it was coming out first, so I just instantly threw out the 
Greninja. Yeah, I just yeah, had to yeah. get rid yeah, of yeah. it. Yeah, you got to have an answer for that thing. That sucker's so mean. Um, and then what else was I going to touch on on his team? Um, his Zapdos has been like a under the radar MVP for his team because it hasn't like <laughs> I think it's like picked up like two or three KOs overall, but it's like it has um it's gotten so many paralyzes through Static and Thunderbolt, and it was like mm-hmm. so huge against Matt because he was able to pick up like I don't know he get like four paras on Static and like. Or no, like two pairs on static and like two on th- Thunderbolt. Like it was so yeah. clutch. Um, and also uh, Reggie Rock last week for him. That thing, that thing is scary, dude. Um, that sucker's so yeah. bulky. Like he's yeah. hard to break through. Um, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to work around Reggie Rock. He's probably the, like Reggie Rock's one of the Pokemon I fear the most on his team, which is pretty funny considering it's an Inu Mon. But um, yeah, like yeah. Zapdos I mean, and Reggie it, Rock are like the scariest to me. But uh, I mean, I feel your Magirna, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel pretty good about my chances. I built my team last night for him. Uh, spent like an hour doing it last week. Oh, uh, so you're already ready, dude? Yeah, yeah, I'm already ready for next week. Mostly because I lost a few days ago, or two days ago. I guess. Oh wait, was that yesterday? No, no, no yesterday. it was two days ago. Oh, it was um, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, after that loss, I was like, okay, I gotta prepare for better because against mm-hmm. Matt's team, I kind of, um, I, I did something really stupid and I tried to, um simply build the like I like I seen how John built beat Matt and it was by having like really hard hitting offensive mons like Garchomp mm-hmm. and I think he had like Spec Zapdos and Scarf Mamoswan and uh, John yeah. was able to break through his like walls eventually. It took a long time but he finally broke through them. And so I was mm-hmm. like, you know what, I can do the same thing. I'll just bring a bunch of hard, big hitting hard-hitting Mons. I don't have to worry about my speed all that much because his team is pretty slow except for just a few. And that's what I did. And then um, then he brought... And I didn't pay any attention to his uh, uh, his offensive Mons, really. And that really bit me because, um, like, the Terrakion, the Scarf mm-hmm. Terrakion caught me off guard. And I don't know why because it's not even a weird set. Um, that's something I definitely should have prepared for. All I, all I needed to do was bring, like, um, Scarf Durant, and I could have caught his... Um, Scarf tracking mm-hmm. off guard because Durant does outspeed him, Scarf, and I think Iron yeah. Head does one shot. So um, I just realized, yeah, I just realized uh, Terrakion with the six KOs, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Terrakion yeah. killed um, the I MVP missed, right there. Yo, I misplayed hard on team, turn five. My Magirna was in at plus one with a hundred percent. Flash Cannon would have KO'd, but I, I switched out. That's just that's just me not knowing my Magirna because um, like going into the season, I wanted to draft Mons that I've either never used or just barely used them because last mm-hmm. season I drafted a lot of Mons that I had used pretty often. And uh, team building was, like, really easy because I knew those Pokemon so well. But this season, it's been really a challenge because I'm using Mons that I've never used before. So I, I'm, like, learning stuff every time I team build on my team. And, um, yeah, last week was just, like, really poor team building. Um, I didn't have a way to win, but I threw it away because of not knowing how strong Magirna was. And uh, that's just my own fault. Like, I don't know why I underestimated Magirna's bolt because it's, it's absolutely crazy. But um, yeah. I overestimated – I mean, I underestimated my Magirna, and uh, it cost me the game. But uh, – um, the good thing I can take away from it is that it was just a 1-0. I was able to mm-hmm. kind of scramble back to a 1-0. Um, Durant really came through. Um, wide lens Durant, dude. That was a weird set. But um, it really came through and was able to claw it back to a 1-0. So I still have a plus 3 uh, differential mm-hmm. to build on. So that's the one like saving grace from that match was the uh, 1-0. Yeah. But uh, I definitely should have had that match if I would not played correctly. Um, because if I get Terrakion gone, all he has left is walls, and all I have left is wall breakers. So, um, yeah. but yeah, like I said, I mean, I can't say much. Like, he he actually played super well that game. Um, he made so many good switches, and um, like the only the only play mm-hmm. I had really had on him was like predicting the Zygarde ten percent switch. Um, aside from that, like he played super well, and uh, he he definitely team prepped better than I did, and um, yeah, I just um, I, my team was just not very cohesive and I, I should have spent more time team building but uh, I was just kind of being careless just thinking I could kind of recreate what John did but obviously that did not work out so that happens dude well but next week hopefully that's, that might be the live game I don't know we gotta figure out some stuff obviously with the commentating Hunter does all our commentating so <laughs> I don't know how that would work with him as a player um, uh, we'll see yeah I don't think you, I don't think you'd want me commentating live with other people in here with me that would be very strange <laughs> maybe we maybe we have to do like a me and Josh combo or something. I don't know. First yeah, time ever. If you could, if you could figure out three. your um, the exploit stuff and um, mm-hmm. record it, then you know, then I could just give you the the mm-hmm. YouTube information and then you could upload it yourself. That would actually work out pretty good. That's true. Yeah, I we might do something like that. Um, what other games we got next week? Josh versus Matt will be a fun one. Um, we got yeah, Reagan versus you versus Reagan. That's a good one. Yeah. Actually, all every single game is good to be honest. Um, I'm really excited about the Josh versus Matt rematch. 
Um, last season, Josh had Kieran Black and was able to just, um, like Kieran Black just destroyed Matt's team last season. Josh doesn't have that firepower this year, so it will it will be fun to see you know, how that matchup goes. Um, yep. Caleb versus Colton. These guys have like interesting teams. Like Caleb's team is super strong. Colton seems like it's got some really good offense, and then it's got some like interesting defensive minds. So I'm, I'm curious to how that game's going to go. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. I'll see we can see his O two tomorrow, dude. There's only oh, yeah, one person. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. O two, O two. Yeah, yeah. Good point. One I, person. That's a, that's a good point. Um, so because you won, there's only going to be one O two team after this week, which is actually crazy <laughs> to think that. Um, after just week number two, there's only going to be one unbeaten team and one team that hasn't won a game. So that's mm-hmm. actually like a really competitive league, and it's really surprising. Um, so yeah, that's that's something I didn't think about. So either Reagan or Caleb will be O and two to start the season. Um, yeah. Yeah, Winning that game for for each of them, I feel like it's almost like a must win game already. <laughs> Even though it's only week number two, it's really a must win. Um, if either yeah. of them want a chance at the playoffs, they really need to pull through in that game. I mean, yeah, it doesn't get any. I mean, it doesn't get any easier as you go along. That's the thing. Yeah, See, yeah. for fortunately for me, I faced the top two teams in the first two weeks, so it just goes downhill. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I see. Yeah. I see. Um, yeah. Yeah. Your schedule. Yeah, yeah, these yeah, you could you could definitely finish out strong if you just if you keep up your level of play that you had against Josh this week. Uh like like I said, um let's I'm gonna talk about the week one matchup between me and you because uh I, I was talking about in the video that I was like Samuel didn't even play bad this game. It was just the fact that like your team really couldn't match up to mine just because of like the nature of the, the picks that we had. Because you had like a lot of special attacking mines and I have some really really strong special defensive walls that match up good against your special attackers so like I remember I remember when we was playing the match you were like your Pokemon take no damage and I was just like well that's just because like my team matches up so good against yours and it's not even your fault like there was almost like no play you could have made to like even make a difference just because of how good my team matched up against yours you know yeah um well I think one thing I messed up on is I think I let, I wanted my tanks to surprise you with damage, and then, but I didn't take into the the like for example the Gyarados, like I I had Porygon two run Thunderbolt, and I was like oh this is gonna catch you off guard, like, this is gonna be good, and then which I wouldn't run any special attack things on my Porygon, so then when it only did like fifty percent, I was like what the f dude like this is like four times effective, and that's when you told me that you're running spe- a straight special defense on. Oh no no that, uh, that was uh, that was Tentacruel yeah. Uh well I, I thought I hit. No, 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 if Gar- you would have hit Gyarados with a T ball, you would have killed it for sure. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, maybe it was Tentacruel. Maybe yeah, one. It was Tentacruel. I was like, I'm going to catch this off guard. I, 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 well, I was really worried about was the, the stealth the the stealth rocks and the, the just the hazard setters in general. I was like, man, I just hate dealing with them. And I couldn't. Um, so I was like, I'm going to surprise him and bring something that he's not expecting, one shot it, and then get it out of there. And then it just didn't happen. So. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever, whenever I seen the Porygon too, my only thought was, hey, I gotta knock this Evio light off. I knew I could take one hit, um, just because I was, like I said, I was max HP, max special defense, um, yeah, Tentacruel. And like I said though, like I was able to build my team with that in mind, and that's what that's what made the game so, kind of like smooth for me was that, like I said, like Tentacruel, even though he gets hit super effective by Porygon too, um it still doesn't do that much just because of how bulky he is. And getting rid of the Evio light was, like, my main concern because, like, I was actually terrified of Porygon too because I was like, man, this thing can be a real pain if it starts to recover and you don't have anything to hit. That's, that's why I brought the Infernape, like, uh, because I was like, I need something that can hit Porygon too hard just in case. Yeah. I need to get that. Dude, I need to find who's got that Hitmonchan, dude. I need to pick that up. Uh, Hitmonchan uh, is a free agent. Oh, really? I so, might need um, to get him. Get that Thunder Punch, Ice Punch, Fire Punch combo. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude. Um, uh, Hitmonchan is actually a really good Pokemon. Um, It has um access to Rapid Spin as well. Um, You do have uh, him on top, don't you? I have top, yeah. I don't know if it, can he learn those? Yes, him on top. He, he does learn Rapid Spin. I'm not sure about the punches, to be That's what uh, I was completely honest with you. That's a pretty big difference. Um, he probably I mean, does. All, he probably I mean, does, that, considering they're like the same family of Pokemon. I mean, it's not stabbed, obviously, but... The physical damage yeah, is actually, nice. Actually, I don't know because um, cause like Hitmonlee learns the kick moves. Hitmonchan learns the punch moves. So mm-hmm. I don't know what Hitmontop learns, to be honest with you. But like he does have Intimidate, which is so strong as a, for yeah, him being a physical wall. And then he also yeah. has like Technician. 
Yeah. Which is like the same, thing. yeah, same ability as Scizor, so. I honestly have no idea what Steadfast is, but it doesn't even matter, because the other two are really good moves. Yeah, if it's flinches, its speed is raised by one stage, so oh, it's kind of a sp- mm. specific thing. Like, if you're yeah, running, yeah, like you know they're going to run a fake out or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would be tough to predict, but, I mean, yeah, even if you yeah. do pull it off, I don't think it would be worth it, because uh, even it's plus one, you can get 95 attack, uh, but... But yeah, yeah, he is a free agent. But um, like I said, you've already got him on top, so I don't, I don't really know if that's a the best trade. But dude, if you like, yeah. if you like the Hitmonchan, like Hitmonchan is definitely a good Pokemon. Uh, I am curious about who's gonna make some free agent trades. There is um, let's see, what teams have not made a trade yet? Colton hasn't. John hasn't. I no, don't no, know. yeah, John hasn't. You haven't. Reagan, um, I'm sure Reagan's gonna trade Magikarp at some point. He's just waiting around. So a lot of teams have already used their one in you free agent trade. Right, I think, you bring, that, bring that next week, dude. See what happens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Call them out. Bring, tell them to bring the magic card. Um, I dare you. <laughs> oh man. Uh yeah. All right. Well, I think that's about all I got. Yeah, that's I got about, one shout out. That's about got one shout out. Me. John, if you're fucking listening, I'm coming for you. <laughs> all right. So Sam's calling out the Torcos, trying to go for that top spot. <laughs> Um, this video has gone on like way longer than I expected, so uh, <laughs> it's gonna take a while to upload. But that is o- that's okay. Um, yeah. It, anyways, there's nothing. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll definitely do this again. Like, we're gonna have to do these videos more and more. Um, yeah. Get everybody on here on Discord, and uh, we're gonna do a live game next week. Don't know which one yet. We may do like a little straw poll and vote. Um, yeah. We may we need to see if we can do it tomorrow. If we can. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to try to do that live game tomorrow. I'll talk to those guys. I'll see Reagan tomorrow night anyway, so I'll talk to him. I'm sure he'll be down for it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we'll try to do that one live tomorrow night. We can both yeah. be in here. That would be sick. Um, Heck yeah, dude. Double, double cast. Oh, yeah, cast. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll, uh, you can be, uh, I'll be quick shot and you can be the fisher or something like that. You know? but, no, no, dude, I'm quick shot because... I'm gonna be the one yelling. You're the one giving the details. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm the I'm the I'm the color caster. You're the play. You're the play by play. Oh wait, is it the other way yeah. around? Uh, no, I'll be the color caster. Yeah. yeah okay. Color. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I got this backwards. But yeah, yeah man. Um, great week too. You was able to pull out a huge win for your team, and you're like you're right in the thick of things now. Um, you was eighth place, but now boom, you're up the you're tied Top. for fifth. Yep. So um, yeah, right there, there in the middle of it. And um, mm-hmm. it's a good place to be at this point in the season. And, um, yeah, we're hey. hopefully going to bring you um, the Raditzes versus the um, the Sandcastles tomorrow night. So be yeah, on yep. the lookout for that. Uh, thank you guys for watching the video. We will see you later. Peace.